Um, we have been looking and we're run, trying to round up the teaching on the characters around the crucifixion. I'm trusting God. After this, we'll have just one or two more and um, we'll be done with this by the grace of God. The last time we looked together, we looked at, of course, we're looking at Jesus, the center of the crucifixion. Jesus, the main character, the main hero in the drama of the crucifixion. We looked at his seven last words at the cross of Calvary. And uh, um, we tried to look at these words and look at the implications of the words and all uh, the messages from this, his last saints, the last seven saints at the cross of Calvary. As we continue in our rounding up on the series, on the characters around the cross, um, this evening, I just want us to look at briefly what were the accusations against Jesus? What did Jesus do that from a human perspective so infuriated the religious leaders that they will consider eliminating him? And um, maybe as we try to look at it, let's also try to see the main reasons behind the scene. Why will they want him dead? And um, I'm trusting God that as we look through these passages, God will open our understanding and we'll see the main reason. Um, CNN used to have a news item. I'm not sure they do it anymore. They call it behind the scene. And behind the scene, my understanding is the real news that is behind the news. And um, so as we look at these accusations, what were the accusations against Jesus? Why would they want him dead? Jesus came. This was one who all he did was just doing good and trying to help humanity. But then some people wanted to kill him. So let's try to look at some of the reasons. I have a few here, and if you have others, who would give us opportunity of um, sharing with us what they were or what they are. Number one, one of the accusations against Jesus was that he did not keep the Sabbath. He broke the Sabbath. And so, as a result, felt he was to be punished for that. And he was to be killed for that. If you turn in your Bibles to the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 12. St. Matthew, chapter 12, from verse 9. Matthew 12, from verse 9, we'll read to verse 14. It says, going on from that place, he went into their synagogue. And a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, If any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it up out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and it was completely restored just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted 
how they might kill him. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26, verse 1 through to 4. Matthew 26, from verse 1 through to, through to 4. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest him secretly and kill him. Okay? Why would they want to kill him? John chapter 8, verses 48 to 59 will give us an idea. John 8, verses 48 um, through to 59. If we read from John chapter 8, Jesus had been teaching and um, he says from the beginning he had been talking to them about being at a point, we started talking to them about being children of Abraham and or not. From verse 31, to the Jews who had believed him, he said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free. And Jesus answered, Verily I say to you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you that I have seen I was telling you what I've seen in the Father's presence, and you're doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered him. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. And as it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I have heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, if you were, sorry, if God were your father, you would have loved me, for I have come from God. I've come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why, why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil and want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet, because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Okay, so now the main point. The Jews answered him, aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon possessed? I'm not possessed by a demon, Jesus said. But I honor my father and you dishonor me. I'm not seeking glory for myself. But there is one who seeks it, and he is a judge. Verily I tell you, or very truly, sorry, I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. After this, they exclaim, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. 
Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father whom you claim as your God is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham, verse 58. Verily I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, what did he say? Did he say I was? Eh? So do you understand the implication of that? To say I am, only one person is I am. He said before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. When he said, I am, he told them that he was God. And for that, they saw it as a blasphemy. And for them, for blaspheming against God, Jesus was to be killed. In John chapter 2, John chapter 2, verse 19. And we will see this later on when he was accused. What did Jesus tell them? Destroy this temple. And what will happen? I will raise it again in three days. Remember when they were accusing him, what did they say? He said he would destroy this temple. And that was an accusation against him. Mark chapter 14. Mark 14. Verse 61 to 64. 61 to 64. He said, but Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven. And what did the high priest do? He tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the word blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. So what were the accusations against Jesus? Blasphemy was an accusation. The reason why they felt like Jesus should die. Okay? We we'll read in John chapter 10, John 10, from verse 25 through to 31. John 10, 25 to 31. Jesus answered, I tell you, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father has given them to me. Sorry, my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of his hand. I and my father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents, they did what? 
they pick up stones to stone him. Amen. For claiming to be one with the Father. They saw it as blasphemy. Let's continue from verse 32. 32. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied. But for what? Blasphemy. Because you, a mere man, do what? You claim to be God. They understood what he was saying. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. If he calls them gods, to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said I am God's son. Do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Again, what did they do? They tried to seize him, but he escaped from their grasp. Jesus, Jesus knew how to look for trouble. <laughs> Hello. So why did they kill him or why, what was the accusations against him? Mark chapter 11, Mark 11 gives us another thing that Jesus did. If you read from verse 15 through to 18, from verse 15 through to 18, on reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for, of, for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers? The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him. Because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 from verse 28 through to verse 30. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went his way. Why did they want to kill him? What were the accusations against Jesus? This is important to Rose. Because when they brought him to trial, we are told in the scriptures that there was no agreement as to the accusations that were against him. Mark chapter 14 verse 56. Mark 14 verse 56. He says, Many testified falsely against him, but what happened? Their statements did not agree. What did the scripture say about witnesses? It says there must be at least two or three witnesses. You cannot convict a man based on the testimony of one person. Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15. Deuteronomy 19 15. 
What does he say? One witness is not enough to convict anyone accused of any crime or offense that they have committed. A matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So for him, you couldn't have two witnesses saying the same thing, that this was what he did. They truly could not find anything against him. I'm sure we remember the testimony as recorded in Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27, when he was brought before Pilate, Um, verse 18 is of interest to us. Verse 18, what did he say? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they handed him over. It was out of self-interest. It was out of envy. So, the question before us tonight is a very simple question. And I'll need your help. What was the reason why they wanted to kill Jesus? What was his main offense? Who can help us? His, his main offense was that he called himself or make himself equal to God. He made himself to be equal to God. To be equal to God. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. He said it was God. Yes, ma. Mr. Sadikola, please. Because he healed the man on Sabbath day. He healed on the Sabbath on day. The Sabbath day. Thank you very much. So, if I'm understanding, the main reason why they wanted to kill him was because they were very religious. They were keeping the, the, the laws of God and Jesus was breaking the laws of God, right? Okay. Yes, yes, sir. There was a class struggle. There was a class struggle between the Pharisees and Jesus Christ. There they was... saw him as a rival who would take their place rather than looking at it spiritually. They saw him as a threat as a rival, okay, Jesus was becoming too popular. Yep, I will talk about that in a bit. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we will find that after resurrecting John the, I say John the Baptist, uh, Lazarus, after raising Lazarus from, from the dead, we will find that was a reason he was becoming more popular and they felt like they needed to do away with him. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Afalabi, please. He was speaking with so much authority without going to their rabbi's school. So they couldn't comprehend him. They didn't know him. All he was doing was just surprise to them. Like this little child. Like the place they said, you are even not up to 50 years old. And you are saying that you know Abraham. They didn't know him. They are yet to pick. Even they are not believing the prophecy that I said that the Lord is coming. So that's what I see. So they can't just comprehend all that he was he, doing. He spoke as one who had so much authority. Yes, ma'am. I think they saw him as, um, they had this mindset and they had established their, their own beliefs. And then they saw somebody who was just turning what they had believed upside down. So they saw him as somebody who was just coming from a different angle. And they just couldn't reason with that, with their preconceived. He was coming from a different narrative, and he was trying to change their own narrative and their mindset, and they couldn't just cope with that. He was too radical. Yes, for kind them. of. Yes, sir. Jesus, let's go this way, please, please. From where we read in the book of uh, John, chapter 10, verse 33, I think... It's very difficult as a woman being to easily understand the, understand the concept of man equating himself with God from their own perspective. Okay, so their understanding, yes. they couldn't comprehend he claiming to be God. Yes, two, one more person. 
they truly did not know who Jesus was. They saw him as a mere lawbreaker and they wanted to fight on God's uh, on behalf of God, they wanted to fight the one that was breaking God's law. Thank you. So ignorance was the reason why they wanted Jesus. Okay, we have um, some hands at the back here. Yes, please. I think the whole of the crime they are accusing of could be summarized in the fact that to protect their own selfish interests. Because if you look at every of all these accusations, either it's authority, either it's the financing, the, the, the money they were making from the temple, or any of all these other areas, it's aimed at yeah, protecting their interests. Selfishness, their selfish interests, like Pilate would, would uh, uh, conclude, was the reason why uh, we should understand that by the nature of teachings that came to them, there is just one God. And you must worship that God alone. I posted something recently on the MMU platform. In the land of Israel, some people were preaching Christ. And the were referring to the Torah that they are adult, adult worshippers, that they were, the Torah allows them to kill them. If you look at the line of this, what is happening, this teaching, you see the Muslims, they are also doing the same thing and confronting us with the same thing, that there's only one God, but we are, we are following Jesus or we are making Jesus or believing Jesus to be another God. So the issue is, religiously, fanatically, they believe in one God. This revelation coming and bringing out somebody that has been, that is in human language, that is also God, is totally conflicting to what the, most, the Lord taught them. Thank you. Blasphemy. I was claiming to be God. Okay, let's go. Quickly, at the back that way. Um, who has the mic here? You can come over here. Okay. Uh, when Jesus Christ claimed that he is the son of, of God, so they believe is blasphemy. Because they are not expecting that he is the one that they are expecting to be a somebody that's more than Jesus Christ. Okay. Blasphemy. And they didn't truly know his identity. Yes, they saw him as a racing star that is to usurp their position, and their competitor, and a judge in their own uh, uh, in in their own case. They are judge and at the same time a competitor. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. As at that time, Jesus Christ, they saw him as somebody who is trying to change the world order. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law and the leaders. His teachings is against their belief and he wants to block their source of income. Thank you very much, sir. Last but not the least. Oh, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Okay. Praise the Lord. They saw him as a threat, you know, because... All those people that have been bowed down by the demon, they don't want to release those people so that they'll be seeing, seeing them under the yoke of the, uh, okay. the Pharisees and Sadducees. But Jesus came to set them free. They saw him as a threat. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think um, they, they were resistant to change. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Jesus told them the truth that they did not want to hear. Jesus told them the truth that they did not want to hear. Ah, I'm sorry. Okay, let's go the back this way. Thank you, sir. I will be a bit different. I will just want to add. We believe today, as many of us who are Christian, are we different from the Jews of their behavior? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay, excuse me, sir. You are going, you, you have going, 
We are going ahead of the syllabus. But thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Pharisees, they saw Jesus Christ, you know, breaking the rules and the regular leader by itself. Because so that it will, you know, go, I mean, they don't want him to just, you know, see that the rules and regulation lay down to prosper. Mm. Okay, they saw him breaking rules. Okay, Daddy Adamu, you will be the last, and then we'll, we'll handle the, the next one. Uh, they believe he was arrogating to himself too much power, too much importance. He, thank you, sir. He arrogated too much power, too much importance. Now, the question is does this happen today? Have you been in a situation wherein somebody was accused and judged and you know this was simple, false, and lie? Does it happen today? What are some of the circumstances? I want to, you know, the, the, the easiest question for me to ask is that, have you done it before? No, but that's not the question I want to ask. The question is, has it happened to you before? Have you been in a situation wherein you were wrongly accused? Or have you seen situations wherein people deliberately, do I use the word, color the truth? People change. I mean, you know, sometimes it's just changing one word. And that makes the, the, the entire narrative completely different. You've turned the narrative. Yes, can somebody help us? Why do we do such things? What are some reasons? Have you experienced it before? Just quick, quickly go ahead. Sister Nika, please. Praise the Lord. Amen. A few years ago, I want to believe that God just remembered me. And I, I was given a particular assignment. I was just called at work that... I will uh, go and do an assignment. I was wondering if my superiors had been informed and I was told I should just accept it and find a way of going for the assignment. It was a national assignment. I didn't know how it came and I was worried. So by the time I went to make my superiors to know about it, I was accused that I went to lobby for it. In fact, in my presence, one of my senior colleagues said, don't mind some of them. They even go to use their bodies to beg for opportunities like this. So I was accused that I went probably to use my body. I was there. It wasn't that somebody came to tell me. They told me to my face. It was a very, very painful experience for me. And... Um, I was able to do the assignment, but I was punished for it that I just went to put my hands in what was bigger than me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other person? Has it happened to you before? Someone want to share with us? Why do people do it? Why do we do such things as humans? Does it happen today? Why do we do it? Yes, ma'am. I will want to say that why people do such things is the fact that when you are in a place and you stand for the truth and you don't waver, you don't look back, you are firm, you are resolute to please God, you will discover that people around even those you are you're working with closely, they want to pull you down. And they can do it in any form at all, just to make sure that you are frustrated out of the system. Thank so you. So people do that. Thank you very much, ma'am. I'll be glad. Yes, sir. Let's. Oh. I'm sorry, Pastor, if I step back a bit, I'll be struggling whether to say this or not to say it. Um, I think this confusion arises 
when, like in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, we see that we can't find the reason for which he was crucified. If you we look at all the passages we read, there were different reasons. And these different reasons didn't belong to one person. Now, each of the parties that took part in the decision to crucify him had a different reason for doing that. Those who wanted to crucify him because of his works on the Sabbath were different from those who wanted to crucify him because he said he was the son of Abraham. In other words, Jesus had many enemies that wanted him eliminated. Their, tes their testimonies couldn't agree, like the Bible tells us, but it didn't matter. In other words, today it happens when our enemies are congregated against us, when they are concentrated against us, it doesn't matter. Don't look for a reason because it doesn't matter. It will happen. So trying to understand why Jesus was crucified, why did they do what they did, I don't think it, it can work. We can't understand it. God had allowed it. So it has happened to me. It keeps happening to me all the time. I don't seek to understand it because it's just not possible to understand it. I'm sorry if I've spoken off point, but I've been struggling whether to say it no. or not. I raised my hand. I put it down. And yes, sir. Please, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving us that, that perspective. Sometimes people just do it. And... Um, it was Herod and Pilate that were enemies and became friends because they had a common enemy. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I would have been dead two times during the time that I was in office. Uh, the first one is a National Planning Commission. Uh, because of assignments that were always given to us, two of us, me and one of my friends, it became a problem. So one day when I went to the office, as I was sitting down, I saw a pic. The pic was not inside my office, but I could see a pic. So I started praying. Eventually, I had to open the toilet and enter because I was so afraid because I couldn't go to start telling anybody that I saw a pig that was following me. So I entered the toilet. I lay down and I cried and I cried. And then I told God to help me because I had an assignment that I needed to give to the minister. So eventually, after crying, I stood up and that was the end of the pig that I saw. Because of that, me and one of my friends, my friend, uh, we were always being asked to go and see us, uh, do assignments, and it became a problem for two of us. So we decided to leave the office. So I, I, I left, we left, uh, five of us left, because we were always being given assignments. So I was sent, to, I, I left, we left, and we stayed at home. Uh, eventually, we went uh, and we were sent to various ministries that if we wanted to leave the office, we could go. But just because of, you know, not, you were not um, uh, received as if we were taking the assignment of, the, of, of other people, but that was not the issue. Mm. So I was... We stayed for six months before we could get, uh, before we were sent from the head of service to various uh, other, offices. Other ministries. Uh -huh, yes. Wow. Because the head of service said if they didn't want us in national planning, that we can go to other offices. Wow. And to what offices? I didn't know that my problem was going to be more than that. Wow. <laughs> You know, the, my other colleagues, five of us, we were we had. So just because when 
the service so that and they decided to let us where we wanted to go. Me, I went. To, I was sent to uh, to head um, to water resources. That one was even worse than the one I had before. There was. Uh, let me just uh, say it short. When I left the home, the house, to go to the office. As I was driving, one uh, pastor called me and said that God ministered to him that if I go to the office and enter the office, that I will die. Mm. So he said to me that I should wait, that he, he had a dream. So on the road, I just waited for him. He took a, 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 a vehicle and went, came and entered the, the, the car with me and we went to the office. So he told me that, no, I went before him. He said I should go to the office, but I should not enter that office. That if I enter the office, I'll be a dead person. At that time, I was a director. So I, I went inside the, uh, my, my vehicle and waited for him. So when he came, he now said he would go first into my office and then before he would pray, then he would call me to enter and then I can sit in that office. But if I enter that office, if I had entered, I would have been a dead person. Wow. Sorry, I, I just have to say this. And uh, he went and opened the office. My staff were sitting in the office. They didn't understand what was happening. So when he entered, he went and prayed. And then he called me, said I should come and enter. I entered the office. We sat down and we prayed. After that time, I had peace. Nothing happened to me again. He told me that if I had entered that office, I would have been dead. Wow. I forgot that charms were put under my office. And that was why he entered the office. Mm. Entered the office and took the charms. I just want to thank God that sometimes uh, I just talk, uh, you know, I'm so happy because I would have been a dead person two times. May the Lord bless us. Amen. A Amen. Thank you very much. Mm. It happens. And you don't have to ask for it. It happens. People have been poisoned. People have been murdered. Um, architect, you want to say something? Okay, after you, please. If you have the... Can we just okay, please hold on, sir. Online. Say, uh, Mommy Oguni, you have the Holy Father, cause your spirit to reach... No, this is not... Okay, that's a bro. Say his actions expose their shortcomings. That's why they wanted to kill him. Thank you very much, media. Yes, sir. I posted uh, something, I think, on the MMU, was, no, on the Sunday school preparatory class platform on yesterday. A pastor in Ogumasho came out to testify how he was maliciously accused of impregnating and a lady of about 18 years old. Later on, when the matter got to police and court, it was further amplified and it was said to have raped the girl. Not that he just had the carnal knowledge of the girl, but that he raped the girl. But he never did. He was shocked when he was informed. The matter started and proceeded over time. And he said he had just maybe about three years to his retirement. Thank God he has a wife that trusts him, that believes in him, that has been all along. And the wife never believed that her husband would ever do that. Eventually at the police station where he was locked up or whether this thing, he was asked to accept that, that before he can be released from the cell, he must accept, he has to accept that he did, he committed the offense. And he said he cannot accept uh, to an offense he never committed. That he didn't commit. The following day or this third day, somebody else came and said, ah, you have not been released. He narrated what the condition which he was given. So eventually they arrived at that, okay, 
if you accept that you will take care of this lady, we'll release you. He accepted. And he was paying stipends of about 25000 every month to the pregnant lady. Eventually, she delivered. They went for DNA tests. I think he was encouraged that they should go for DNA tests. They did one at Ibadan. It was not accepted at the court. They had to go to Lagos. He went through a lot of tra uh, trauma. Eventually, it was discovered that he had no hand in it. And later on from investigation, it was discovered that the mother of the girl encouraged the girl uh, to implicate the pastor just to tarnish his integrity when he's about retiring from service. Praise the Lord. I'm sure you know that people have been murdered. Politicians have been killed. People have cooked up stories. Tonight, we just want to round up with this prayer. God will keep you. God will keep us to fulfill our destinies. Now, the truth is, just like for Jesus... It may not be within your power. In short, that might be what you need to be promoted. Amen. If the brothers of Joseph could hate him, and that became the fulfillment of even his dreams, sometimes it is not in our control. And it will happen to us whether you like it or not. But there are times that you can do something about it. There are times that all you need to do is on your knees stop the work of darkness, the work of hatred, the work of bitterness against you, against your family. But finally, 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 this is it for me. Before you partner with people to take action, or before you take actions against a brother, against a sister, against somebody, ask yourself, what is your real motive? Are you being led by the Spirit of God? Or are you walking in rebellion against the Spirit of God? May the Lord help us not to be agents in the hands of the devil, to destroy lives, to destroy institutions, to destroying communities, to destroying people. Shall we just rise as we go to the Lord in prayers? Just give thanks to God for the opportunity to have this time together. And just say a word of prayer for yourself, for your family members. Lord, protect us. Protect our destinies. Keep us, O oh God, don't allow any human to stand in our way to prevent us from fulfilling that which you have destined for us. Fight on our behalf. Rouse yourself on behalf of our family members. Lord, raise up the standard of the cross against every accusation from the pits of hell. Against me, against my family, against your church, against my community. Lord, every battle taking place from hell against our destiny, manifest your power, your power of intervention, your power of deliverance, manifest your power of breakthrough, manifest your power of escape, Manifest your power of vindication in the name of Jesus Christ. You want to pray for yourself? Lord, help me not to be a tool in the hands of the devil. Not to be the one that will pull down the person you're not pulling down. Not to be the one that will stand as a stumbling block against your kingdom against my brother, against my sister. Help me not to yield my life, yield myself as instruments of darkness, as instruments of evil, as instruments of the devil. 
Oh God, help me not to be a tool in the hands of the devil. Thank you, Father. Thank you for our time together this evening. We pray you will continue to guide us, lead us, help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord.